I think many of us can relate to this reality that as we get older and gain more responsibilities, we find ourselves with less time to dedicate to our hobbies. And thus, to fuel that flickering flame, we have to find ways of balancing our time between the mandatory and the recreational. And I'm no different to this struggle. Like many others, I have to contend with a full-time job, making weekly content for the channel, and of course playing the games themselves. But I feel that over the years I've found the methods that work for me. And though I'm certain these won't help everyone, I'd still like to share them. These are six tips that I've adopted to slowly but surely whittle down my JRPG backlog. This first point is rooted into my daily routine for the most part, and it's that I always want to set aside a space for gaming each day. I ensure that all my necessary tasks are done first and then I can go to my unwinding period with nothing pressing against my mind, no distractions that can take me away from a good session. And that's important for me personally, because not only does it mean I'm stuck in the zone so to speak, but when I have that innate satisfaction from getting everything done in a day before I settle down, I find that I am more inclined to make the most of my down period. As for the time dedicated to this slot, it's by no means set in stone. Some days it may be an hour, others could be half an hour, and if I'm really enjoying my time it can be upwards of three hours. But the most important thing for me is that I am consistently making progress. And this as a foundation has worked well for me when also incorporating these next two points. And the first of those two is no doubt going to be blasphemy for some, but it is to play more than one JRPG concurrently. When I was first starting out in this genre, I was rooted in the mindset of playing one game at a time, as I felt that was the way in which I would gain the best experience. I could lose myself in the world, I could be wholly invested in the characters, and if I broke away to other games during that period, it would take me a while to reassimilate when I returned. For the most part it worked, however when combined with the other bad habits I had which we'll touch on next, all it took was one bad game to scupper all progress. Nowadays I adopt a different approach and play several games at once. Very recently, in fact, I was playing Atelier Lydian Sewell, Neo The World Ends With You, SMT3 Nocturne and DQ11 concurrently, and I've since finished all of them. What I realise is that the variety that comes from playing multiple games at once gives me a fresh experience every day, and I find that there is always a game to suit my mood. If I'm not feeling an oppressive and potentially brutal experience like SMT3, I can defer to the more relaxing experience of Atelier. If I'm more upbeat and need a game to match that energy, I go with something unashamedly flashy like Neo. However, the best thing about this approach is that it allows me to appreciate other games that at first may not have grabbed me. DQ11, for example, didn't hook me in initially and I actually left it for about two months. It was only after I played SMT3 Nocturne all the way through that I came back to DQ11 with a renewed appreciation for it. Though Nocturne in of itself is also an excellent game, it is old school in its mechanics. Frequent random encounters even with the repel, backtracking, the potential to lose hours of progress if you're not saving often, lack of direction. SMT3 was stressful at times, and thus coming back to the grand yet lighter tone of DQ11 worked a treat. I found myself appreciating the polish, the quality of life, the simple yet solid turn-based combat. Those stop and start 35 hours that I left it at quickly ballooned to nearly double that within a week. And my worries about being able to fully assimilate back into these fantasy worlds upon leaving them? Not a problem, I was back on board within the hour. So yeah, I stick to this method like the gospel nowadays. The second of this holy duo is something I frowned upon for a long time as well, and it is to abandon games that are not interesting me. Back in the day when I was fixed on that idea of playing one game at a time, I would also endeavour to finish it. Not anymore. How many times have you heard this line? Oh, it gets good after 30 hours. You know what I think when I hear that? It tells me that the game is A, poorly paced, and or B, has bad storytelling. With increasingly limited time in my life, I don't want to be sitting around for 30 hours hoping that the game gets better. For me, it's mainly the story that keeps me engaged, and if there are no plot points opening up, no suspense being built, and no indication of a thrilling climax with any sense of flow or rhythm, then it's not worth my time. 10 hours is my limit nowadays. If a game can't show me any promise in 10 hours, I leave it. Of course, I still want to finish every game that I play, but I want to enjoy my time leading up to that as well. A strong ending sequence does not excuse poor build-up, from both a narrative and gameplay perspective. And the reason I take this approach nowadays is because there was a game that encompassed those problems. It, in combination with my stubbornness, effectively halted all progress I was making. 
That game was Agarest Generations of War. The premise was cool, and that's about it. For about three months I plodded along in bursts of 10 to 20 minutes a day trying to like this game. And I remember the day well, I was 25 hours in, I had my 360 controller in one hand staring blankly at the screen as the monotonous gameplay wound on, and I just told myself, I am not enjoying this game. As soon as those words were said, I closed it down and have not returned since. And you know what? It was the best thing I did because I followed that up with Nier Automata, which reignited the spark that Agarest had nearly snuffed out. I don't want that to happen again, so I take it upon myself to abandon the games that don't interest me and move on to better things, and it's worked splendidly. Now on to my fourth tip, and another one that I'm sure some people will frown upon, but again, it works for me. Don't feel obligated to put in hundreds of hours just because other people have. Some players like to play to completion and get those platinum trophies, some like to explore every nook and cranny. Cool, good for them. However, if you are satisfied with what you have done in the game, you have done all the quests you want to do, maybe looked into some late game equipment, but you feel like you've done everything you want in, say, half that time, then there is nothing wrong with ending your experience there. Just because you've put in half the time that someone else has does not invalidate your opinion on a game. You've experienced the same story, the same characters, and the same gameplay. For me, the sweet spot for a JRPG is around the 40 to 50 hour mark. It's the range by which I feel I've got my money's worth, but also the point at which the game doesn't overstay its welcome, with a few exceptions like Persona 5 Royal and the Trails games. And that's no issue for me because those games are engaging pretty much all the way through despite their long run times. But in the majority, 40 to 50 hours is perfect. I'm by no means a completionist, but that range generally gives me time to do all the content I want, maybe do some post-game shenanigans, and then leave wholly satisfied with my experience. And since we are mentioning longer playthroughs, this segues pretty well to the next point which I'll keep brief, and that is to alternate between longer JRPGs and shorter ones. As a habit, if a game is piquing my interest on my own backlog, I check to see how long that game is on average before I choose to take it on. And the reason is that if I've had a lengthy journey in the last game, in which case I'm still absorbing everything I've played through, sometimes I need to follow that up with a shorter experience to unwind a little, a JRPG that's a bit less involved. So, for example, after I finished P5R, I moved on to E6, which was a solid game in of itself, but took me less than 15 hours to finish, as opposed to the grander journey from Persona. I find it's a psychological benefit for me to alternate, since it puts me in the right frame of mind to keep picking up new games to try out. However, even with all these approaches and all that variety on offer, sometimes I don't want to play anything, which leads me to my final point. That's being mentality. When I draw together a backlog for a year, it is by no means my full backlog. They are simply games on my large list that I want to play during the year. And that's the key word there. I want to play them, not I have to play them. Your backlog is not your job, or I hope it's not. Rather to me, a backlog of games represents choices, a perpetual notion that I will always have something to look forward to and will never run out of games to play in my favourite genre. If someone plays a new release before me and enjoys it, good for them. It means I've got another game on my own backlog that I can look forward to. This is exactly what happened last year. After I replayed the entirety of Cold Steel, I took a break from games and YouTube for about a month. And it was perfect for me at the time, it gave me a chance to recharge and to really appreciate why I played JRPGs in the first place. I don't play these games to be part of a clique or because I'm obligated to, I play them to escape, to enjoy the worlds and characters that are crafted by these developers, and with this mentality, I know that I'll be here for the long haul. So there it is guys, how I slowly but surely am pushing through my JRPG backlog. They seem simple enough, but finding that optimum balance is a challenge at times, so I thought I'd share the mix of methods that works for me. Enjoy your own backlogs for this year, and see you next week.